have the solutions to fix the climate. And as a scientist, I've been able to see firsthand some of these great solutions. But I've also been able to contribute to some of them. During my PhD at the University of Cambridge, I was able to work on reducing soot pollution, which is a significant contributor to global warming. After that, I went to the Cambridge Centre for Carbon Reduction and Chemical Technologies in Singapore, where I worked on cutting-edge science to decarbonise industry. And now I'm in Perth, Western Australia, working at Curtin University on carbon nanotechnology in order to enable renewable energy and the hydrogen economy. I also regularly light my hand on fire um, to encourage young people and the public to be climate champions just like I am. But what good are all of these great solutions if there are people that still don't even think that the climate is changing? What good are all these great solutions if there are people that still think humans have no part to play in our changing climate? If you're a climate champion like I am, you may have had a talk with someone who's skeptical about climate change. It's just left you feeling frustrated, angry, and hopeless. Well, I actually have experience on the other side of that conversation. Believe it or not, I used to be skeptical about climate change. When I was at high school, I would argue with people about climate change, and I'm sure that the conversations I had left them feeling frustrated, angry, and hopeless. So what happened? What changed me from a climate skeptic into a climate champion? So today, I want to tell you my personal story. I want to focus on three main aspects that helped me change my mind, and hopefully, it'll help you change others' minds. So I grew up in a small farming town. Climate change wasn't really talked about, perhaps maybe in a passing joke. But at some stage, I got interested in climate change, and so I started to Google. Bad idea. <laughs> I quickly found myself down a rabbit hole of conspiracy theories. I saw online cherry-picked data, graphs showing the temperature is not increasing. I heard from fake experts, most of them weren't even climate scientists, saying that they didn't think the climate was changing. And I also um, heard conspiracy theories about how the government is using climate change to control us. I just want to take a step back and try to explain to you what that feels like. So firstly, I felt frustrated because I thought if people had done the research like I had done, they wouldn't think that the climate was changing. I also felt isolated. There was no one I could really talk to about this, and, and, and so I went to these echo chambers online. I also felt powerless because there were these bad actors that were controlling the future and were manipulating people. So the first step in me challenging this mindset was when I entered a science competition in high school. I built an engine that had steam injection that improves the fuel efficiency. But as I was talking to the judge, it became clear that what I thought about this engine was derived from pseudoscience online. I thought it was going quite well, until the plasma physicist who was judging me said that I was completely wrong, which was hard to hear, actually. Um, I spent a long time on the project. Um, and, and I would not receive any prize because of it. But he said something else. He said that he would mentor me. So that brings me to the first aspect, respect. This scientist respected me enough to listen to me and not laugh, but also to respect me enough to continue the conversation. He didn't give up on me. He said, look, I want to mentor you. And so that's what I did. Next, next year, I had a much better project. Here it is here, me in high school. This here is a bioenergy reactor that can turn wood into renewable energy. 
And uh, this is actually a critical piece of technology that we need to decarbonize. It's called bioenergy carbon capture and storage. This time, talking to the judges, um, I was talking much more scientifically soundly, so, uh, so I advanced to the next stage of the competition, which was at the national level. As part of this, we actually had a week-long set of activities touring around the capital, looking at different laboratories. And one of those places I got to visit was a climate change research centre. And this is amazing. They actually had the ice core samples that had been drilled from Antarctica. I got to go into the room that actually held these samples. And the scientists explained how tiny bubbles that had been trapped in the ice thousands of years ago allow us to reconstruct the CO2 levels and the temperature in the past. During the talk, though, I challenged the scientist. <laughs> and again, I was shown respect. The scientist, she listened to what I had to say, and didn't laugh. She told me I was wrong, but she did something else. She got me in contact with really good information. And that's the second aspect that really helped me change my mind. Good information helped plant the seed of doubt. Now, you may have heard the idea that, that skeptics are impervious to facts. You know, you can just throw facts at a skeptic, and they'll just rebound off. You may have heard something more insidious, that if you engage with a skeptic and talk to them about facts, then actually they're going to um, get more entrenched in their position, and that conversation will be actually detrimental. Now, I'm happy to say that the most recent psychological studies show that that's not the case, that facts are always helpful at changing people's minds. But the disrespecting people is the fastest way to stop that conversation that means that you can no longer communicate those facts. So what the scientist did is she got me in contact, she, she, she directed me towards really good online resources. One of these websites called skepticalscience.com. This is um, a website developed by an Australian social scientist whose father <coughs> was skeptical about climate change. And on this website, climate scientists go through all of the arguments and all the myths associated with um, climate change, and one by one they explain at a basic, intermediate, and advanced level why the most up-to-date science shows that they're not the case. This really made an impact on me. I no longer talked publicly about climate change. And let me tell you, information is great at shutting people up. <laughs> but it's not good at, at changing people into climate champions. In order to do that, we need to do something else. And that brings me to the third aspect that helped me change. We need to connect people's values to the climate. For me, this started, actually, in my faith community. The minister respected me, listened to me, and told me I was wrong. And he directed me to a university professor who taught and researched on cancer genetics, human evolution, and the impact of climate change on our health. Talking with this professor, I start to see how the things I care about are connected to the climate. He told me about how, how the poorest in the world are going to be impacted the most, while the richest in the world, who have done the polluting, are going to be able to pay to adapt. He told me about how our food system is reliant on a climate that doesn't change by a fraction of a degree over the last sort of 10,000 years, and that by disrupting the climate, we are heading towards famine and war. Also, biodiversity relies on stability, and the, ch and the change in the climate now is unprecedented and is leading to the decline of this world that I love so much and that I love to study. He also appealed to my sense of truth and honesty, and he showed me that facts that I've been shown online were in fact either cherry-picked, out of date, or just outright lies. And he showed me how a lot of effort has gone into deceiving people by people that don't want us to change. And finally, he helped connect what I'm passionate about and the skills that I have with climate action. I love using the tools of science now to help champion the climate to look for solutions and to try and fix our broken climate.
And that's what I do. I've been around the world to some of the top research centres over the last decade of my life, and I've dedicated myself to doing that science. And to be honest, I'd love to talk more about that science. But I want to ask the question, what would have happened if people hadn't respected me, given me good information, and connected my values to the climate? I certainly wouldn't be standing here before you today. So what, what you take away from my talk really depends on who you are. You might actually be still skeptical about climate change. I want to challenge you to look at the best and most recent up-to-date science. Go to skepticalscience.com and see whether the arguments you have match up with the most recent data that we have. Talk to someone who cares about the climate and see whether the reasons they care about the climate are the same things that you share. And finally, I want to assure you that you won't change who you are by becoming a climate champion. For me, I was able to be much more genuine to who I am by connecting my values to what's actually going on. Also, you might be a climate champion here who used to be skeptical about climate change just like me. I want to challenge you to be much more public about that. We need to normalise this discussion and not shame people when they talk about the questions they have about climate change. By doing that, we will open up many more dialogues with people and we'll also encourage people to see that there are people that are changing their mind. You might be a climate champion here who's just having some really difficult conversations with someone in your life who is sceptical about climate change. And for you, I want to encourage you, keep having those conversations. As Dr. Catherine Hayhoe, the climate scientist and science communicator says, the most important thing we can do about the climate is to talk about it. But for people who are actively dismissive, we need to do more. We need to listen more. We need to respect them enough to listen to them, tell them where they're wrong, and guide them towards better information. But we also need to connect what they value with the climate. Not what we value, but what they value with the climate. And if we do that, people can change just as I did. And finally, if you're here and you're a climate champion, and you've just lost hope that we'll be able to fix the climate, I want to encourage you that we do have some incredible solutions. Some of them are scientific, but not all of them are scientific. And your skills, what you love to do, your passions, can be applied to fixing this climate. We need you. And if we do that, as long as people are changing their mind, there is hope that we can change the world. Thank you.